we've derived at lesson 0 0.6 and today we're going to review the topic of exponential functions. And I hope you remember that an exponential function is just a function that has a constant base but a variable exponent. So here are some examples. 2 to the power x. You might have seen this thing called e, right? e is a number that's like pi, goes on forever and ever e to the power x, perhaps, and maybe something like this, 3 to the power of, yes, even a function not just of x, but x squared minus 5 as the exponent, that also represents an exponential function. I hope you remember these basic properties of exponents. Anything to the power of 0 is 1. Two things with the same base. You can then add the exponents together. Division. As long as they're the same base, you subtract. This is the one that's the power to a power, x to the power of y, is just multiply x, y. This is the one here where you distribute, so you can distribute the exponents, same thing here, distribute to the a in the numerator, and distribute to the denominator. Hopefully you also remember a negative exponent can be written as a positive one, it's just reciprocal, or 1 over a to the power x. And then please note that this is not true. So many times people think, oh, 3 plus 4 to the power of 2, that's 3 squared plus 4 squared. Definitely not the case. Okay? And then one more I like to do, it's this one. I'm going to write down number 8 over here. Uh, a to the power of a fractional exponent. Do you know this one? M over N. Uh, hopefully you remember that this can be written as a to the 1 over n multiplied by m. Pretty much I'm using rule number 4 here to help us out. don't know if you remember, but when it's 1 over n, then this is the same thing as a root. So this is like the nth root of a, all raised to the power of m. Okay. Uh, you could have, by the way, written it like this and then take the root, but I always like making the number smaller before making it bigger, okay? Um, if you were in my class and doing pre-calculus days, I use this to help you memorize it. I drew a flower, Whee! and I called it flower power because the power is on the top, right? The M is the actual exponent or power. And n is like the stuff on the bottom. I know it's called a stem, but I like to call it the root. So the bottom number of fraction is the root. The numerator of the fractional exponent is the power. All right? And that lends us well with example number one, because I see 27 to the power of 4 thirds. I know that the 3 represents the root. So this is the same thing as the cube root of 27. And then I will then raise it to the power of 4. So the cube root of 27 is 3. 3 to the power of 4, that's right, that's 81. Number 2 here, e plus 1 over e, well, whatever that number is, it doesn't matter because when I raise anything to the power of 0, yep, that equals to 1. And for e, I'd ask you to simplify first, so taking a look at this lovely expression, perhaps we can simplify here on the inside. I see multiplication, so I add the exponents together. I now see division, so I subtract the exponent, so 2 minus 4 is negative 2. And then I raise it to a power that's e to the negative 4. And because I said, please, no negative exponents, I'll say 1 over e to the power of positive 4. All right, and you're like, whoa, what just happened number 4? The bases aren't the same. Well, if they're not the same, you have to make them the same. Hopefully you can realize that the 25 can be written as a power of 5. Yeah, 5 squared to the negative 2. And then, of course, that simplifies because you have a square and the negative 2. We can multiply them together. And now we can do what? Yes, if you said let's add them. I agree. That's 5 to the negative 1 or just 1 fifth. Done. And similarly for number 5, how do I solve something like this without a calculator? Well, you have to change them and use the same base. So change into the same base. And in this case, 9 and 27, can you tell me what power base can go in handy? 
Yeah, if you said 9 is the same thing as 3 squared, I like it. And if you said 27 is the same thing as 3 cubed, I like that. We can simplify this, it becomes 3 to the power 2x and 3 to the power 3. And then once you have a exponent on the left and one exponent on the right with the same base, we can now just equate the exponents and therefore 2x equals to 3 or x equals to 3 over 2. Beautiful. Okay. And then for number six, it says, can you use a calculator to carefully graph these? So you can. Um, and then do you see any similarities in the graph? Well, if you've done this stuff before, you should. Two to the power x, hopefully you can see that this equals to one. When x equals to two, I guess you get uh, two. And then two squared is four. And I hope that you can see when I get negatively, you know what, if I'm going to make a table of values, I should just do it anyways, right? So if I said negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, for 2 to the power of x, this would be 2 to the power of negative 3, which is just 1 eighth. 2 to the power of negative 2, which is 1 fourth. 2 to the power of negative 1, which is 1 half. 2 to the power of 0, which is 1. 2 to the power of 1, which is 2. 2 squared is 4. So really small values here but hopefully you can see that whoop, the graph grows exponentially what happens when it's five well y equals to five to the power x that's five to the power of negative three that's one over 125 five to the power of negative two that's one over 25 five to the negative one that's one over five and this is one this is five this is 25 so getting flatter even quicker, sharing the point at zero, and then shooting up woo, really quickly. There's your five to the power x graph. <coughs> Excuse me. And then finally, if you want the e to the x graph, we can do that here too, y equals e to the x. e, if you're thinking about it as a number, that's approximately 2.718. So you can think of this as 2.718 to the power x. And I'm not going to actually do these calculations, but you should see that the graph should be somewhere in between these two. So let me just try and sketch something in between. All right. What are the similarities? I hope you can see all these graphs have the same domain, all real numbers. All these graphs have the same range, bigger than zero. Notice I didn't include zero. so. Really what happens here at zero is you have a nice horizontal asymptote. And that's what I want you to see in point number three. The x-axis is really a horizontal asymptote. Gets closer and closer to that value, but never actually equals it. Okay. Um, you're like, what's this notation? Limit, limit, we'll talk about that very shortly. But if you're curious, what I'm saying is when x approaches negative infinity, so if I were to continue all the way to the left here, when it approaches negative infinity, the y value gets closer and closer to zero. In this particular expression, limit as x approach to infinity of f of x, that's when the graph goes up, 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 really far out when x is really large. You'll see that the y value is also really, really large. Okay. What other things do you see? Hopefully you can see they're continuous. It's also increasing. You might not have seen this term before concave upward, but we will talk about that in calculus in the future. And definitely one to one, because if I were to do the horizontal and vertical line test, it only touches the graph at, that's right, one particular point. And the key thing here also is that the y-intercept is always at zero comma one, boop, right there. And another key point is when the exponent is 1, because then you have 1, and you have this point, and this point, that's just a key point. The y value is equal to the base of the exponent. All right, so what's left in this review? Can you go ahead now and actually try to graph things out? Okay. 
um, the letter E is used as the base in examples 2, 3, and 6. It's not an unknown, okay? It is called the natural base for the exponential function. You'll see that it is quite common in calculus because functions with base E are quite easy to differentiate and integrate. You'll hear these terms when we're talking about the course. But by definition, if you're curious, this is what E is. It's when the limit as x approached to 0 of this crazy function, 1 plus x to the power of 1 over x, is calculated. For those of you taking BC, we'll talk about that for sure, and we'll show you how that came to be. But really, if you're curious what that number is, like I said earlier, it's about 2.718. So, idea once again is, can you sketch this out? Well, yeah, I think I can. I have a key point, 0, 0,1. At 1, it's 2.718. If you're thinking about at 2, so that's, uh, what, 2.718 squared, you can just use your calculator. Oh, without a calculator. Oops, sorry. <laughs> so we have to estimate. Uh, what's this? Uh, 2.5 is about 6.25. 3 is about 9. So I don't know, 2.7. What would that be? Do some estimating here. I don't know, something about 7.5 perhaps. So approximately 7.5. So at 2, the y value is up here at 7.5. We can do the same thing at 2.718 to the negative 1. So that's 1 divided by 2.7. If you think about what that equals to 2, I don't know, approximately 0.3 or 0.4, I guess. I'll just say 0.4. And so you can see the graph, once again, having that exponential form where it is increasing. It also gets closer and closer to 0 as x becomes negative. And we have these key points here. Okay. And then finally, with number eight, once again, using these adjustments, can you actually use transformations and tell me what happens? If you look at this graph and you compare it with that, what changed? Yes, there's a negative on the x, which represents a reflection in the y-axis. Thank you. And then what's this plus one? That's right. That's a shift of one unit up. So if you can just take that graph in number 7 and do the reflection and shift it up, then you got the graph of e to the negative x plus 1. So I'll quickly do the reflection first, still a key point. Now it's negative 1, about 2.718. This is 0.4, so here is this part. That, of course, is just y equals to e to the negative x. And then now i got to add 1 to it, so let me also add 1 to all these things and hopefully you can see that the graph in red represents the graph of y equals e to the negative x plus 1. And then write an equation for the graph of the asymptote. Yes, it's a horizontal asymptote. And because that got shifted up by 1, my equation of the horizontal asymptote is no longer y equals 0. Oops, oops, oops. It's now y equals to 1. Okay, so a quick review of exponentials. Once again, I'll try the assignment. And guess what we're going to do next? If you've learned exponentials, you got to know logs. So we'll see you for lesson 0 0.7 as we review logarithms. See you soon.